We need to challenge ourselves. When we have those moments where we begin to believe the lies or think about what our neighbor's saying or our doctor is speaking over us, no, what runs in my family? Goodness and mercy and grace and humility. That's the family I'm part of. If you follow Jesus, that's the family you're part of. Where have you began to accept less than God's best? Is it your health? Is it your finances? Is it maybe with your spouse? You just think, well, this is kind of how marriages are and it's okay, you know, we're happy sometimes or I don't know what situation you are in right now, but I've been challenging myself and I wanna challenge you, where is it that I've let the world's way of thinking, the world's way of doing creep in and I haven't kept the word in my heart, in my mouth, hearing it, letting it wash over me and help me cast aside the lies that I've begun to believe. You are the only person who can do that for you. And it's so important that each day you stay connected to your maker, to your father who made you so perfectly, who loves you, who has given you everything you need for life and godliness, the word says. Now listen, you either believe that or you don't. You either read your Bible and see, wow, God has given me everything I need for life. So I'm gonna follow him because, hey, who else is offering us life, right? Stop and think about it. Who else offers you a guarantee of life abundant, of peace, of joy, of prosperity, of favor, of reconciliation? Where else can you find that right now? Nowhere, nowhere. You will never find anything in comparison to the goodness of God. And we didn't even ask him for it. That's the most incredible thing. You know, I was thinking about it the other day and Jesus came not even knowing if you or I would accept his gift. He came, he lived his life for us, he, he died, he took on the curse, he became the sacrifice for us, not even knowing if we would choose him. If we would choose, that's how much he loves us. That's how much God so loved the world. God loves you. Not your boss, not, not, I mean, I mean, he loves everyone, but you know how sometimes we can say, oh, God loves my boss more because he does this. And God loves, you know, my sister more because she's got her life more put together. Nowhere in God's word does it say, I expect you to be perfect. Nowhere in God's word does it says you need to come to me blameless and without shame and without mistakes. No, God knew that we were imperfect. God knows that the perfection of Jesus was the most perfect sacrifice for you and I. And man, if anything, it just makes me so thankful that I can come to God vulnerable, seeking his help, not needing to hide any failure, not needing to hide any mistake, because God loves me and he forgives me. The word says he forgives your sin as far as the east is from the west. It doesn't even click in God's mind. He sees you through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. You are righteous in Jesus when you follow him, when you choose to bring him into your life. So where have you began to accept less than God's best? Because let me tell you, when you join God's family, it is the most incredible family on planet earth. You know what? Sickness doesn't run in my family. Disease doesn't run in my family. Poverty, depression, anxiety, fear, that doesn't run in my family. I belong to God's family. You wanna know what runs in my family? Health and peace and joy and prosperity and life and forgiveness and acceptance. We need to challenge ourselves. When we have those moments where we begin to believe the lies or think about what our neighbor's saying or our doctor is speaking over us, no, what runs in my family? goodness and mercy and grace and humility. That's the family I'm part of. If you follow Jesus, that's the family you're part of. I wanna encourage you with a couple things before I finish. When it comes to believing in God's best and not letting the world you know, convince you to believe otherwise, there's a couple things that you and I need to do. They're important, they're so important. You need to stop comparing yourself to others. You know, it says in, um, it says that we all have that race to run, right? That there's a race that God's put in front of us. There's something he's called you to. He's equipped you for it. But if I'm running my race and I look over to the left 
And I start comparing myself to someone, the way they live their life, the way they do what they do, and I start feeling inferior and allowing myself to compare. Or I look to the right and I see, you know, you know, maybe they're not doing as well as me and I'm comparing, oh, I'm doing pretty good. And I'm getting my eyes off of the direction in which God has called me to. And what happens when you start looking to the left or to the right, if you're running, you're gonna trip over yourself. You are gonna fall and scrape your knee, bang your head, I don't know what. But the um, danger in comparing yourself to others, it stops you from being able to truly be who God made you to be. And in Galatians, it says, if I attempt to please others, I would fail at being a true servant of Jesus. You know, so there's one part of comparing, there's another part of trying to please everyone, trying to, trying to make them happy and that's where you find your satisfaction. No, God has put gifts and abilities in every single one of us. We are unique, we are different, we are called, we are appointed by Him. He gives us all the tools we need, but we can get in the way of ourselves by simply allowing people to get in the way. Maybe you allow what people say to hold you back, you need to stop. You need to stop letting the words of others become a curse over your life. It is within your power. It is within your choices each and every day. You know, I get offended. Things come at me and I go, oh, wow, man, that really hurt. But in that moment, I can choose to live in hurt or I can choose to let it go and choose to forgive. And the, the power of forgiveness and not letting people's words, hey, I know some of you have heard some of the worst words from some of the people who are supposed to love you the most. But let me tell you, God loves you <laughs> more than anyone will ever love you in this lifetime. And even when people have let you down, God never lets you down. And never let what someone speaks over you be a reason to hold you back from what God is positioning you to do, from what you need to do to make a mark on this um, world, on your nation, on your city, on your family. You have been called, you have been gifted, and. If you were to let people get in the way, let me tell you at the end of your life, you will regret it looking back and seeing the power that you gave people over your life. So stop letting what people say affect you. Stop thinking and comparing yourself to others and be who God called you to be. The second thing, don't let the enemy get in your way. You know, I was thinking the other day when Jesus was on this earth and he was healing the sick, the blind were, were seeing, the dead were rising to life. He fed 5,000 people with a few fish and loaves. He did profound miracles that the world had never heard of or seen before. And what did he say right before he ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father because he finished his work? He said, I've got to go because Holy Spirit's coming. God is sending you the most incredible gift and it's Holy Spirit and you want him. He's your comforter. He's your guide. He is the one that is going to be with you and show you how to be, how to do this life with God. But he said, greater things will you do than I've done. Like, like think about that for a second. Have you even really just thought, man, Jesus said that I'd do greater things than raising the dead or healing the blind, or feeding thousands of people. Okay, the enemy was there, like the enemy's been around forever, right? And um, I mean, God's been around the most, but the enemy's been around at some point before you and I. And um, he was there. I just imagine the enemy shaking in his boots. He just saw Jesus perform the most amazing miracles. And then Jesus says out loud, guess what? If you follow me, if you're my disciple, you'll do greater things than I even did. I bet you right there in that moment, the enemy was like, guys, we cannot, we cannot let these people understand the power that they have inside of them. We have to do everything we can to stop them from walking in. Man, if, if they're gonna do greater things than Jesus, and there's, there's hundreds of them, there's millions of them, there's thousands of them. I don't know how many were there at that time, but could you, I just imagine him shaking in his boots. And in some ways, I know he still is today, but guess what? I think from that moment on, we saw the enemy, and I'm sure he's been doing it even before, but to hear Jesus say that 
begin to attack our identity, begin to tell us that, oh, you'll never amount to anything. Oh, you, you did that, so how could you help that person? Your life isn't perfect. Oh, you should really fear what's going on here. He's constantly presenting ideas to you. No one can make you think anything without your consent. And I wanna encourage you. The Bible says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. When you know that you know that God is for you, who can be against you? A thousand can fall at one side, 10,000 at the other, and it will not come near you. I hardly give the enemy a thought in my day-to-day -day life. What you give uh, thought to, what you give focus to, you give power to. The enemy was defeated by Jesus. The word says that as Jesus is in this world, so am I. That is where I put my faith. I put my faith, my trust, my hope in Jesus. And even in the moments where I flounder a little bit or I get a little bit fearful, I so quickly remind myself, I put on a teaching series, I talk to my husband, I talk to a pastor and I remind myself, what does the word say in this situation? What am I called to do? Who am I called to be? If Jesus said the greater things will you do, the greatness that is inside of you is beyond your comprehension. The things that God has called you to do, the things that he has given you everything you need to rise up and be that person, it's inside of you. And when you let people or you let the enemy lead you astray and you accept something they've said or they want you to think, you have gotten off course. But let me tell you, you can get back on course. I'm not here to make anybody feel shame, anybody feel condemnation. I am here to show you that the truth is that God is always for you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He has a plan, a beautiful plan that would make you just so happy right to your bones, just excited and passionate about life and all that he has for you. Life has stuff, but my God is bigger. My God is greater. Your God, man, he, has, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. His favor is for generations. His goodness and mercy is new every morning. When you fill yourself with the word and and you know that you know the truth. You will not let people and you will not let the enemy stand in the way. So make a choice today. I will not give the enemy a foothold. I will not let him stand in my way. I will not let him deceive me. The Bible says the enemy is a deceiver and man does he work it. He works hard to deceive you from the truth because he knows, what does the Bible say? The truth you know will set you free. Where do you feel in bondage today? Where do you feel maybe you're suffering with addiction? Addiction doesn't run in my family, <laughs> right? Bondage doesn't run in God's family. That's where we belong. That's where we have a home, a hope, a future through God. 